All right, what's up, everybody? In this in this video, I'm gonna go back to dynamics here, and uh, um, and we talk a little about about relative motion of two particles with translating axes, and and here this is coming up with the relative motion equation, and essentially breaking up motion into two parts, and and this using relative motion on two particles is really good uh, precursor for for plane motion of rigid bodies, which is a little bit more of an advanced topic here because there in order to analyze that motion you got to break it up into two parts in terms of using uh, a fixed reference frame and a translating reference frame so here let me just talk a little bit about it so let's take we let's say we have a particle here that we're interested in its motion here i'll call this particle here i'll call this one b right here and uh, um and i have a fixed reference that's important here we'll call this o the fixed reference right here and I can define its vector or its position uh, using a position vector from the reference right here. It has a position here, a vector RB. And then moving on another path here, let's say I have another particle over here, A, whose position is defined from a vector of the fixed reference here. Oops, whoa, what the heck? All right, right here, right here, it's this location RA. Okay, and and just using basic vector algebra right here, I could I could relate you know this I can turn uh, relate all this in terms of a triangle right here, and I could say well if I use vector algebra right here, then I would say that the the distance R B right here or this position vector R B is equal to R A plus the distance or the position of B with respect to A. And so it's kind of important here. The One of the things that, that you want to be aware of is the way I interpret this B slash A here is the position of B with respect to A right here. And so that's my, my relative position. Here is my relative position. Relative position here, relative position. Okay. And, uh, um, and, and you know that's it that's really the the position right here so we're gonna we have these two positions or the relative position of two particles and then as well as from a reference frame here now let's look at, at the velocity let's say i have here uh the velocity so that was position if i do velocity here so if i take again these two particles so here i have particle a let me change this path a little bit here let's make this path a little bit more like so like this right here and right here because I want my velocity to be tangent to the path. So here this would be the velocity of A right here. And then I have a, a, a let's see, a particle B that's going, let's say, over right about here, particle B right here. And this has a velocity vector b vb right here and what i want to do here to to kind of relate these two velocities or, or come up with a relative velocity equation with for these is is take these two vectors take them off if you will and connect their tails okay i'm going to take it off i know this sounds this is a trick i use just to just to remind myself what i have to do when i analyze relative motion problems here i have this vb here and then i've got here I connect VB, so I've drawn VB here, and then I have VA, oops, I have VA, which is about here, let's say VA right here. I've, re I've essentially lifted them off the page, connected their tails together, and then my velocity of B with respect to A would be kind of the, the um, connecting the heads of these vectors, the velocity of B with respect to A here. Bam, right here. And then to come up with a vector equation here, I would have, you know, VB, is equal to VA plus VB with respect to A. And this is the same, what we've done geometrically is the same as here, taking a time derivative of this whole whole thing. If I take DDT of this, then I, you know, I'm just going to get VB equals VA plus VBA, like that, right there. So I, I'd get the same velocity of equation right there if I, if I did that as well. And then right here, in terms of relative acceleration, so here, let's label this. Let's make this a little bit cleaner here. This would be my relative velocity equation. Equation here. 
Bam. Okay. Relative velocity equation, and here this would be my relative position. Okay. Equation right here. Relative position. Bam. Right here. Okay. And then, uh, um, and then if, if for acceleration, it'd be kind of it'd be the same thing. So if I have acceleration here let's say these particles also have an acceleration let's say this one is going like this this is the acceleration of b uh, and then the acceleration of a is here a a then again I, I take the tails of these two vectors off and i would have and i connect their tails together so i have here this a b and then a a is going like this a a and then to connect or, or to have a rel the relative velocity would be defined by the heads of the, the vector. So this would be the relative acceleration. I mean, the ex acceleration of A with respect to B. I'm sorry. The relative acceleration of B with respect to A. Okay, this being A. And again, my vector equation just becomes AB is equal to AA plus ABA. Right here. And here is my relative velocity, position, velocity, and acceleration equations. And, and again, I could just take the time to remove this velocity, and I'd get the relative acceleration equation. So, so the tools that become really important for us in terms of uh, understanding the relative or calculating, you know, calculating the relative velocity and position, of, well, no, relative velocity and acceleration of, of various particles is, is to be able to assemble this triangle of two particles right here, Essentially, this triangle for the velocity, if you will, this velocity triangle or this uh, velocity vector diagram and this acceleration vector diagram. And then, and then if we don't want to use the vector forms of equations, we can just simply use the law of cosines and law of sines. Okay? So here, law of cosines, law of cosines, and law of sines becomes really important, okay? Law of cosines and law of sines. And law of cosines, it, you know, it, it's, uh, um, what is this, like C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of theta, or the angle between vectors A and B right here. So the triangle would look like this here. I'd have A, B, C, and this would be the angle theta right there. If I want to find the magnitude of that, C right there. And then law of sines, which here, if this is alpha, and this is uh, A, and here is beta, and here is gamma, this is B, and this is C. So it's like sine alpha. Ooh, it's, ah, it's the same. It's like A over sine alpha is equal to B over sine of uh, um, beta is equal to C over the sine of gamma, all right? So finally, maybe a practical application or use of law of sines and law of cosines for all of you from back in the day of, what, Algebra 2 or something, trig? Anyway, all right, it all comes screaming back here eventually. All right, so uh, I'll do another video maybe in the next video. I'll do an example problem. All right, take it easy.